Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we uh, this is just kind of a spontaneous, uh, quick, spontaneous, purposeful, um, and yet very important little video we want to do. And before we get started, we wanted to thank our newest subscriber. Thank you so much, Mulder1234, for your support. Five. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Thank you, Mulder. Thank we you. appreciate you. And uh, boy, Mulder, Mulder and Scully, I think the X-Files and I think about, yes, the truth is out there and everything is so, so hidden. This is a TED Talk with Anthony Holland. And, you know, again, I think one of the things we're supposed to do in this world is is listen. Listen to what the world is telling us. Listen to what the universe is telling us. Uh, this morning there was like one comment that was saying what is that bell that Cindy is hitting at the end of a video and this was a video we did a while ago and I, I went and I figured it must be one of her tuning forks yes it is a tuning fork and by the way there's a whole bunch of tuning forks on the table right in front of us mm -hmm. and they are calibrated each to a different resonant frequency you know sonic slider is one she uses all the time um, Let's see which one's this. This one's 62.64 hertz. I'm not sure she's the expert with it. I'm not sure what she uses yeah. that one for. Um, that's another, that's sonic, another slider. sonic slider. Yes. There's another tuning one. forks reson that are resonant with each organ, like yeah. lung and spleen and kidneys and, and all, because uh, sound is foundational to this universe. This universe literally is. It's just light and sound. That's all creation is. It's light and sound. Well, they're, they're so much fun. You know, I, I have tuning forks that can really put someone in a very good space um, by narrow beats, and there are certain things you do with them. And, and we do this distance, and you can do it in person as well. But I, I was really happy to find out the distance tuning forks works so well, and it's been nothing but fun to work on people and see their progression and, you know, recalibrate some organs. Sometimes people need help with the liver. Sometimes it's the heart. You know, there's blockages. Those can be removed. And it really, since Mike and I are both activated, the energy that we put into the vibration and when we are, we actually talk to your cells and your cells are coherent to what we are saying and when we add the vibration to that there's so much that happens to the human body it's incredible and when I got into this I just I couldn't pull myself away I had to understand it completely and I had to do it and I practiced on my family and you know and here I am I'm I'm working on people all the time and using using my intuition and Mike's energy and it just works out so well so I can't say enough about sound and how important it is what you surround yourself with yeah <clears throat> and what she just said leads off into another tangent which um I'm going to come back to and you know <laughs> I'm thinking I, I need to maybe even put um, a note in front of me and pad in front of me for as we're doing these videos now because there's just so much to share with you guys and this TED talk again is Anthony Holland uh, what's he talking about shattering cancer with frequencies shattering cancer with frequencies breaking down cancerous cells with frequencies and you know this is just to to me and cindy it's like yeah of course uh, but to the average person maybe this is not in a, of course this is curious plus um <clears throat> so this is a channel that talks a lot about uh the vedas the hindu universe and right here how the ancient indians use sound to cure diseases so, you know, this popped up right after a uh, comment on a video in which somebody was saying, what's that sound that Cindy's doing because I'm sick and she's hitting this tuning fork and all of a sudden the mucus is breaking down. Yeah. And they just started to binge watch uh, some of our videos. And there you go. At just one strike of the tuning fork at the end of a video. And they're noticing immediately they're getting a little relief from their symptoms yes you know this is where 
they will call it pseudoscience because we have to realize we're in an upside down world. You're in an upside down world. It's, everything is turned upside down and inversed because this world is not about what it says it's about. When they tell us that things are for our health, you can usually uh, assume the inverse and you're going to be much closer to the truth. And if they say again, you know, like this right here, uh, this is from Reuters, targeting cancer cells with resonant frequencies has not been shown to cure cancer. It's a Reuters fact check. Oh, okay. So we know we're on the right track then. <laughs> yes. You know, because we know, I mean, again, the, the fact check police are out there and their fact checking is all about locking your mind down. It's locking your mind down. It's all about compliance. It's all about listen to us. Don't listen to what your intuition's saying. Don't listen to what some uh, some wackadoo mad scientist that has discovered uh, you can actually break down cancerous cells with certain frequencies. Now, conversely, you could actually feed them with other. And, and that's what we should re really recognize, and many people have. Because what's happening now is humankind has been put in the soup of uh, toxic frequencies. Not alone toxic chemicals, toxic water, toxic air, everything, you know, toxic food. No, it's also toxic frequencies. And this is another reason why we, we always will say um, better off outside of the cities. Uh, last time I went to Greenville, South Carolina, which is a, a wonderful city, which I love. I love Greenville. I couldn't stand it uh, inside the city. And when I looked up, I could feel where it was coming from. It was coming from all those towers. And as soon as I got just a little bit outside of the city, I was okay. In the city, I, I was just feeling like a trapped rat in a cage and, and anxiety and like, God, I got to get out of here. You know, I just feel like somebody's boiling me alive in here. They literally are. Because what's happening at a cellular level, we might not be able to see without the use of a microscope, but it is happening. These frequencies, think of a microwave, because that's what, what we're really talking about here. You know, they are causing damage to the cells at a level that you cannot see, but is really, really there. Conversely, certain sounds, certain frequencies can actually cure things. So this is powerful, simple news that really, again, doesn't lend any money, which money really equals power in this world to the system. So if you learned that you can just simply resonate some sounds on your own and that could literally affect positive change in your body, it might not be, boom, a miracle overnight and you wake up and you're all cured. No, things generally take time to get started. They generally take time to, uh, to heal as well. And then also we got to remove ourselves from the toxic situation because you could dry yourself you know, off from all sorts of toxins. But if you jump right back into the, the toxic soup per se, there you go. They're penetrating you again. This is a, a, a good little 17 minute Ted talk. And yes, I am. <clears throat> I'm somebody that's always talking about TikTok mentality. And yet now I do put the settings up to one and a half times till I get something good <laughs> because there's just so much yeah. research to be done every day and so much spiritual work to be done uh, every day. And here is part of the reveal when we see channels like this, uh, Curious Plus, uh, and there's so many others. They are discovering that what's in the Vedas, what's in the Puranas, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, and all these different Hindu holy books, this knowledge seems to have been given us from above. And it has. Because the authors of many of these books, and again, much of this has been transmitted orally downwards. So just like with other traditions, you're not sure if you're getting 100% exact um, because initially it's, it's word of mouth and, and transmission. And then, you know, they copy it. And then, of course, there could be errors in transmission. But this is where we shouldn't be dogmatic about it. We should look at the bigger picture. You know, sound can cure. And, and again, 
uh, mantras have a, a very, very powerful uh, impact on people's lives. And when we see somebody for the first time, usually we will recommend that they do um, mantras if you know they feel so inclined. And sometimes uh, societal programming, having a strict religious background will make it so people can't openly embrace a mantra because they feel they're cheating on their tradition, so to speak. And it, it's always the case that people that, that do the mantras, uh, they seem to root and ground, they seem to be anchored and solidly on an ascending path. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, nature is just such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Someone sent me something today and it said in a study showed that uh, participants who went for a 90 minute walk in nature, as opposed to the same duration walk in the city, reported lower instances of rumination and showed a reduced amount of uh, neural activity in areas of the brain linked to mood imbalances. I mean, nature has such a way to bring us to our center, finding yourself out in the country. I mean, even if you're wearing shoes with soles on them, touching the trees, touching the plants, they all have their own little resonance and they're all out there talking to you. They're all out there giving information to help bring you peace. I mean, it, it's a very, <laughs> it's curiously a very busy place out in the nature and the forest, very different than in the city. In the city, it's a lot of artificial, artificial resonance that's going on that's penetrating the body in a negative way and it can cause a lot of, uh, distress. It can cause the body to feel uncomfortable. It can cause irritation. You go out into the forest and you get around that which you are actually made of, of the earth, then there's this uh, centropy that happens. And in, in the city, there's like this entropy, you know, entropy being that which is uh, being broken down, something that's uh, falling down, fraying. Think, think of a, a shoelaces that fray. That's the entropy. And then syntropy, you get around these uh, tones and you get around these activated energies and then you have syntropy. Then uh, all that is fraying is finding itself coming back together, pulling itself up, renewing itself. And I think that's one of the really, the coolest things ever. The, the problem in lies, like Mike said, is people can have these treatments done but then they jump back in the toxic soup and that's going to create more entropy. So it does require, it does require one to get on that healing path. But this is one way to light up that healing path so somebody knows which way to go. So when Dr. Holland first began using sound frequencies on cells, he controlled the signal by testing different frequencies, checking for cellular changes through the microscope. He discovered that he needed two different frequencies at the same time. With a combination of a higher and lower frequency at the 11th harmonic, the higher one is 11 times the frequency of the lower one. He realized that adding frequencies so that multiple waves were hitting the cancer cells would be like increasing the power of the signal. After adding the 11th frequency to the test on cancer cells, he noticed a strange phenomenon. The cells appeared shattered like a high note shattering a crystal glass. The outer wall of the cancer cell broke and the contents of the cell um, spilled out and you know, interesting here how they're showing a picture of somebody's armpit because last night uh, before going to bed, um, I saw a study and it showed that 99% of uh, women that had breast cancer in this one study, uh, the commonality was they found the same uh, chemicals in the tissues that were leaching into their system again through their deodorants. This is why we don't use deodorant, and this is why we don't see people in person. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, we don't use uh, a deodorant per se, but you can make up a deodorant like we do with our toothpaste uh, just from coconut. Uh, again, coconut oil. You could use some baking soda. You can use essential oils like peppermint and eucalyptus and tea tree. You know, nature has a way of doing things. But the reality is, too, um, body odor goes down as you get uh, more and more detoxified. We need to always be detoxing in these, in these times. The effect of this leading technology on cancer cells. The research showed pancreatic cancer cells shattered at between 100,000 and 300,000 hertz. 
ovarian cancer cells, leukemia cells responded by shattering the same way. The frequencies resulted in destruction of anywhere from 25% to 60% of cancer cells. Now, you know, conversely, they understand this because, again, the system has created all sorts of weaponry, uh, which may be put into effect in the very near future and, and has been used on the battlefields in, in Iraq and other areas, if you've uh, delved into that, using sound. It could be uh, very uncomfortable. We were just talking about the movie, uh, Leave the World Behind, where they show the use of, of, of sound uh, weaponry. And, and again, you can use sound to cause uh, a response that will f just be uh, horrid on, on the body. And yet, we can also use sound to heal the body. And if you are somebody that likes really, really heavy music, as you know, I grew up uh, in the hair metal time, so I was listening to you know, everything from Black Sabbath and, and Led Zeppelin and then over into uh, Rat and Motley Crue and all those type of groups and on through the times. If we're listening to things exclusively of those high frequencies, uh, we're going to be getting cortisol response. We're going to be having the body in fight or flight constantly. And it's just going to stress out your whole system. We have to realize that just like taking too much of a medicine, um, a, l a little coffee or an espresso can get you through the day, uh, absolutely. But if, if you overload on it, you might not sleep and you might get worn out. And so, you know, these days, um, I would listen to anything that is of that sort of uh, stimulative effect very, very, uh, in very, very small portions, generally just before working out or during working out. Um, but most of the time, um, if I'm listening to something, it's much more tranquil and peaceful because, again, we, we want to stay in the rest and digest side of, of our autonomic nervous system where the body is able to heal itself. And, and what happens is when we're in these soups uh, and we speak into so many people in, in big cities like, you know, again, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and they're in, the, in D.C. and they're in the middle of these cities and they're wondering why they just can't get rid of their allergies or they can't get rid of this problem or that problem. It's because you're in the middle of a toxic soup, first and foremost. And it's it's not likely unless you can build yourself maybe a bedroom uh, with eight inch concrete walls that you're really going to be able to heal. And at the same time, we did have a bedroom with 12 inch concrete walls out in the desert. And oh, my God, it was amazing. And, and we were out in the middle of the desert. Uh, you know, there wasn't 200 people within miles of us. And it was still amazing being uh, surrounded in, in the earth. You know, so what I'm trying to get across here is that when I see, and, and, and I spoke about this like a couple of weeks ago as we were watching a, sh uh, um, a sports program and they were just nonstop. They were talking about the Jimmy V Foundation and cancer research and, and raising money for cancer research. The sad reality is so much of that money, it just goes into the system. And, you know, there are ways we can get past cancer because as much as they want to ignore all the success stories and they're innumerable out there of people that have been told they have terminal cancer and then they get over it you know they they really don't want people sharing that because it, it doesn't feed the system and it doesn't make money for the system it doesn't lend power to the system but people have gotten over cancer with many simple ways and one of them is just you know simply changing your lifestyle uh, adopting spiritual practices, stop eating toxic food, realize that, you know, sugars, simple sugars feed cancer, start to recognize the importance of diet and clean uh, water, clean air as much as we can, and removing yourself from all these toxic environments because, you know, so often even uh, what we're doing might not agree with the higher self. And, and it could be that you need to change your job. It could be that you need to change where you're living. It could be that you just simply need to get off the junk food and get some exercise and get out in nature. 
Um, but again, there's so many different components to this, and people have used alternative treatments to get past this time and time again. Some people do use the system and get past this as well. But what happens is usually people end up with an immune system that's compromised because they've gone the route of blasting everything in their body. And so other things develop years down the line. You, know, you don't get that effect with things that are natural, typically. No, I mean, when you have natural remedies, it's like the body has these mechanisms inside of it that if you put something natural, an herbal remedy, essential oil, there's receptors waiting. They're waiting to receive this information. And they actually know what to do with it. If you are receiving some type of chemical compound in the form of a pill, it's like the body's like, I, I don't, I'm not sure what to do with this. We're just going to junk it. So it sends it, sends it out the liver because it feels, okay, well, this is just junk. It's no good. And then nothing happens with it. So what they've had to do with these chemical made up pills is they've had, they have to make them so that the liver is actually overwhelmed and that way, some of the medicine can get into the body. And they're definitely not going to share this with you <laughs> because there's so much money to be had in these little pills that are made up of, of that give you a chemical reaction. So that's the difference. In, uh, and I never really understood that either until I dug even deeper. But I do understand that now. So it's like the body has to be overwhelmed by these chemical things. And that's no good for us. You know, in this over time... The liver is like, okay, I'm exhausted. Whereas you go the natural route, the body already knows what to do with it. It's like, oh, hey, I know, I know what this does. You know, this goes in this direction, that goes in that direction. The key with, with the natural remedies is they work as long as you have the right combination of what you need to do. Um, you, can, you can have a problem and go the natural route and you might end up taking, I don't know, 20 different things and they're just not working and it's because you have not found the right combination. It does take a lot of time, but you know what? It, you're going to be so much better off than the other route because you're not, even though you're trying different things, you're not doing the same thing to your liver as, as you would be. At least the body is receiving some benefit and it does take time. So patience has to be like at the very, very top of the list. And that's something I struggled with. It's like, oh, wow, you know, I want to get better fast. So I'll just take all this stuff right now. <laughs> it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You have to find the balance. You have to slow yourself down. We work at the pace of nature. And nature is slow, but she's also perfect. Well, again, you know, our, this is where our bodies come from. Our bodies are from the earth. So being in resonance with the natural things, the natural order just simply makes sense. So Dr. Holland's research relies heavily on an invention that can be used to deliver the frequencies and bursts of on-off, on-off cycles. The reason is that having sound waves constantly on causes heat, which causes the destruction of other living cells around the cancer cells. So, again, make note of the fact that when you see those towers everywhere, you're being constantly barraged and boiled in these frequencies. Again, we, we can understand microwaves nowadays. I think many people can. These are some PDFs that he, um, that some, some research that he's done showing this. I'll give you guys all the links. And again, we're not endorsing his treatment. We're just saying that the reality is uh, all these things have been right in front of us the whole time. Right in front of us the whole time. Uh, this is on Heart's Own. And so this is one of the most popular, if not the most popular video that we did on Heart's Own. Uh, healing Biofield Energy Tuning System with Cindy. Please use this um, because this can literally help you, uh, help you rebalance your energy system. Again, one layer of our existence is, is this physical body. Our bodies extend out beyond the physical, meaning we have all these different layers of energy bodies. And ultimately, we are pure consciousness. So there's all these different aspects to our existence that gets ignored in, in, in modern science. And it's, it's for a reason, because also, you know, the system and the true controllers 
they can't go where we can go. They they have basically cut themselves off uh, from their higher selves. And so, you know, they're just in a position where, yeah, yeah it's, it's that old thing. Uh, there is this uh, Christian myth or what have you of uh, Satan, you know, some will say Lucifer being jealous of humans. Ah, well, there is truth in that because the controllers are jealous of us and they're fearful of us because we still have our connection to our higher selves, which is so far beyond what they can do. They are so limited. They are but shadows of what they were. And this is the reality. And then many of these controllers, these dark controllers, are in, in reality nothing but thought forms. And so they're, they're nothing substantial in and of themselves. But we do have source in us. And, and we can tap into the healing power of the earth and the healing power of our higher self. So, you know, please do utilize these uh, as, as free, you know, just out there for you guys to use on a regular basis. And we do have people that, that will go here. Uh, this one's a meditation and tuning for DNA repair. And this one is with Ananda Maima, who is one of our um, beloved guides. And Ananda Mayama uh, was on the planet in recent times and in, in a physical body and was a blessing to be in her presence. And she is still around. You know, uh, while I'm thinking about it, I want to just um, mention David Icke lost his, his daughter, who was 48, uh, to a long, long battle, a long disease. And it might very well be uh, cancer. He didn't release that. Um, I don't know, but just want to send prayers and healing to him and his his daughter. She is now, um, you know, all around him and is going to absolutely uh, help his work. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's something that people really, unfortunately, is so hard when we lose someone in the 3D. There's nothing easy about it. It's like we have to learn to refill that vortex but our loved ones are now all around us and they can be with many different people at once because they become an energy source, an energy ball. So whenever a loved one calls them, it's like they can send out that point of energy to one person and then a point of energy to another person at the same time. And that's what makes it so beautiful that they can be many different places at once because you're now... Uh, part of the multi-dimensional makeup of things this is a pdf of the padma purana which we'll probably pick apart in in other videos going forth i just want to give you guys for anybody that's getting curious um a link to this it covers a lot of things again it's taught it, it, it's giving us lessons that were given to us um by a benevolent extraterrestrials. This is the big reveal. When we look to the sources of the Vedic wisdom, uh, these beings are not from here. And, and yet they gave us a real understanding on who we are and how creation works and the cycles, the, the cycles of the yugas, the cycles of many uh, different periods that we go through. And this is 1,809 pages, and this is one of 18 Puranas uh, that are often grouped together, and which doesn't include uh, things like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and, and so many other works. This is, again, uh, what I've been saying. You, you might think, and I've seen people that say, all I need is the Bible, and the Bible is wouldn't even cover the introduction to all the works that we have out there in in the hindu scriptures it's that the bible's small it's tiny in comparison and this and it also doesn't answer uh, many questions about creation they'll give you one little blurb of a line yeah you know there's just so much here and you know it can be overwhelming to go through but many westerners have and one of the things that's real fascinating is again the outright telling us that there's hundreds of thousands of humanoid species in our own universe hundreds of thousands of humanoid species the reality of different dimensions different planes of existence extraterrestrials inner earth beings 
uh, you know, beings that live in oceans. I mean, it goes on and on. Interaction with beings, the wars of the gods, uh, the dark demonic uh, beings that took over the planet and have been in charge for probably the last 5,000 years or so, perhaps longer. It's so hard to figure things out with the resets and the cycles uh, exactly. This is Richard Leslie Thompson, and he is uh, a good place to start. And, and for many people, I would say this is a really good place to start. As far as if you want an introduction to what wisdom is there in, in the Vedas, but from a real solid English um, perspective, you know, the hidden history of the human race, uh, this, this forbidden archaeology is written by Michael Cremo. Um, he did a lot of books that um, I've recommended in, in the past that blend science with the Vedic wisdom. And, you know, again, Richard uh, L. Thompson, if you, if you go into um, Amazon, you'll, you'll find a, a variety of books from him. And, you know, at the same time, uh, he, he is basically somebody that followed uh, the Hindu path. As he learned more, he realized this just this kind of explains everything. It, it explains the higher dimensional science that we've been looking at from, you know, a quantum physics perspective, which isn't quite right. There's something missing, something distorted there, something wrong there. But Again, I would strongly recommend um, starting with his works. Uh, good books, they go fast, but then you could come back to them time and time and time again. So I uh, just wanted to share all this with you guys. And again, you know, as you see, oh no, we got caught. Yeah, it's trying to fly the coop, trying to break out of the system. This is what we're doing one soul at a time, recognizing the, the walls that are up around us are, are walls of consciousness that have been raised by a system that wants to keep us in the dark. And the reality is we can break out of this system anytime we choose to. Uh, this is a temporary human experience. Temporary human experience because you're not always human. And that's something most people can't get their heads around. Um, but again, if you want to raise your vibrations, the mantras are a great way to go. And we have these shorts and let me just play one just to give you a, a for instance. Hey everybody, a quick example of how we do Ganesha's mantra. And we want to tell you a little bit about what Ganesha is for. So all those little stumbling blocks that you have in your life, those things that slow you down, stop you from being the best you. Ganesh is amazing to open up that path. He is a mover of obstacles. So this is his mantra. Om Gam Ganapati Namaha Sharanam Ganesha. And, and, you know, again, there's a whole list. Now that that's shorts. Uh, there's a whole list going in deeper. And Gayatri is a beautiful one. Again, when we talk about the rishis, because the, so many of these mantras come from the rishis. Who are the rishis? Well, you know, in, in many ways, they are what we would term ascended masters. And then who are the ascended masters? Well, and when you get down to it, they're not from earth. You know, so that's the reveal. You know, these are teachers that come from other densities and other worlds, but they are benevolent ones that are here trying to lift us up and show us how to lift ourselves up. It's always a choice. Yes. And of course, there's many other things we can do uh, frequency wise. And it might be as simple as just removing ourselves uh, from a toxic environment. Indeed. Source bless, and we look forward to your comments. Namaste. Namaste.